I'm Mike Ahern, and I'm about to go one on one with Scott Wise, the man behind Scotty's Brew Pub. After four decades of reporting the stories that shaped Indiana's history, now he's bringing you face to face with today's newsmakers. This is Mike Ahern, one on one. From a lemonade stand in Muncie to one of the most popular and prominent destinations during Super Bowl week in Indianapolis, Scott's Brew Pub. But uh, Scotty's Brew Pub, but who exactly is this Scotty? Well, now there's talk of another Super Bowl bid, so let's find out more as I go one on one with Scott Wise. Scott, welcome to the program. Thank it's you, great Mike. to have you with us. Tonight. Appreciate it. Uh -huh. Uh, you are the president and CEO of Pots and Pans Productions. So I assume that's the company that uh, runs all eight that of your is, restaurants. That is. Yep. We uh, set up a, a management company to oversee all the four different concepts the lake house, the brew house. Three Wise Men and the Burger Joint down in Columbus. I want to talk about your Super Bowl memories because I know you have a lot of those. Also, how you <laughs> compete in a, uh, in, as well as struggling economy and with all the franchise restaurants sure. out there. But first of all, let's find out more about you. You growing up in Muncie, Indiana. Yeah, I, f I feel like I'm on a uh, This Is Your Life kind of program right now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was a small town boy, uh, good parents. I think they raised a boy with uh, hard work effort and uh, great values. And I, I really believe that's kind of the core of, to my whole growth. I mean, they made me who I am. I think even going in through college, you got to pay for your own books and you got to buy your own first car and you got to do all these things. And I think that that was kind of the, uh, I think the core values to make me who I am today. What my second restaurant, I lost a million dollars. And I think they could have said, you know what, we'll try to help you take care of this. But they didn't. They backed away and said, you wanted to get into this crazy restaurant business, now you <laughs> deal with your problems. And so, and I did, and it took me about eight years to get that paid off. But I think that's learning those lessons early in life and then later in life into the, my career, that's what, that, you know, you got to go through those mistakes to, to get you to where you need to be and, and to learn from them. So. I've heard that the one word your family would never utter is the word can't. I can't. Is that right? Yeah, I think you keep up with me on either yeah. Facebook or Twitter, one of the... Well, uh, <laughs> several, several sources here. And as I said <laughs> earlier, uh, I've got to apologize. My first comment is always, I'm sorry if I've offended you at some point or another. But, yeah, I, I, you know, I, we were raised that my, I, I was always a challenge. My dad would say, you know, I, you, I would say, you can't fly. And he would say, I can fly. I can, you know, and it was always, I kept coming up with these things and saying, Dad, you can't do this and you can't do that. And he always had an answer. And I never got it. I never understood it until later in life. And I, I understood that what he was telling me was that we can do anything we want to if we put our mind to it and you give me 110% effort, I can make it happen. And, yeah. and so that was kind of the value that I was raised with, raised with. So even in my company today, it's never... You know, if they say can't, I say that's not that's not even an option. Yeah. It's let's figure out how we, how to go around it. This sounds like the all American cliche, but you started with a lemonade stand. Well, it was one of your first big businesses, right? It was. I was, you know, I was pulling weeds early on, and I was, you know, I tell a story a lot of times where I was selling. Uh, I, I my dad taught me to dip toothpicks in cinnamon oil, and I took them to school. And my first employees were my sisters, so I said, you know, take these and sell them for ten cents a piece, and we'll make a lot of money. And well, I forgot to dry the toothpicks, and they, the, kid, the kids at school were touching their face, and so school that day was shut down because everybody went home with a, a red rash. So I, I had some few bumps and bruises, and first in my early in my career, but you know, I, I going from that and then running a concession stand at, at our neighborhood pool, and it just, I always knew that that was in my blood, that I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I knew that I had that drive and desire. I just got very lucky to pick a career that I, I'm very passionate about and I love what I do. And I saw your Odd Jobs Incorporated. Now, how does a, how does a 13-year-old form a corporation? <laughs> well, it, well, it really, technically it wasn't incorporated. Oh, you know, okay. there was, I think I was sure I broke some labor laws early on when I was 16 and 14 running these businesses. And I also had a business card that had incorporated on it just because I thought it sounded cool. And my dad's business was incorporated, so I had to have an incorporation. So. I think you said that running this concession stand really was your first introduction to running a real business. You had to keep schedules yep. and uh, inventory, that's yep. Thing. Yeah, you know, you learn early on how hard it is to, you know, it, I think a lot of these jobs, I think anybody's job, looks a lot more gr glamorous from the outside. Sure. I, always, I always believe you can't really judge somebody until you walk a mile in their shoes. And I think you look at a business like a bar or a restaurant, oh, it's got to be a lot of fun. And it comes with a lot of headaches and a lot of heartache. And, you know, I think with anything you do, as long as your heart is in the right place and you're passionate about what you do and you love what you do, I think that comes through in, in the end. And, and that's, for me... It's never a monetary goal. It's never a, I got to have 15, 20, 30 restaurants. It's all about ha loving 
and having a passion for my industry. So you spent your summers as a as a waiter uh, in, down in down in Florida. I did Panama and, City, and then winters were spent in the also in the food service industry. It was business bike up in yeah. Muncie, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I worked uh, as a waiter at Applebee's and Malibu Grill when it was in in town, and uh, I worked at Dill Street Bar and Grill in Muncie as a as a dishwasher. That was my first entry into the actually Dairy Queen was my very first job in food service uh, when I was 14 mm -hmm. in, in Yorktown. Uh, so I, I, you know, I went through the normal progressions of cook and then waiter and then manager and so I, I kind of just got a feel for it and I figured out, hey, I, lo I love this and I want to make this a career. Now that, that experience as a waiter and a cook, is that why you seem to have a special bond with your employees? Because you know, when you go up into a restaurant, the first person you see, maybe the only person you see, is going to be that server. Sure. And uh, so that's the face of your business. You know, I think that the world has kind of changed. You know, we've gotten very tech, and I'm one to blame. Yeah. Uh, we've gotten very impersonal. And I feel like it's almost made it easier for us to be, we're in an industry of talking to people, of customer service. And I, and I try to hire people that have always been smile and personality first, and I'll train the talent later. I can train you how to serve a burger and serve a beer, but I can't teach you how to smile and say please and thank you and those, those things that are, I think, a, a lost art. So I, I've always prided ourselves and our companies on find that core value in our people and make sure that that comes through because the rest of it will sell itself. You have said in fact that the, the, your workers, your employees are as important. They're number perhaps, one. Perhaps more so They're than They're number your one. I, I've, I'm a big proponent to say that, you know, I, I, it used to be a secret, but now I've, I, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm just going to share it with everybody that I believe the employee is more important than the customer because I believe if you put your love and passion into your employees and they understand it and they believe in your dreams and your values, then ultimately they're going to make the guest happy too. So. I'm a, I'm a big proponent, very employee-centric in my company. We're going to be back to talk to Scott Wise, the model, <laughs> <laughs> and also we'll talk about Super Bowl week right after this.